What's going on guys, it is Sam and in this video what I'm going to be giving you guys is a free download link to a pack of .r3d raw files straight from my red digital cinema camera. So if you've never used one of them before, this is a great opportunity to get your hands on some files and play around with them in post-production. Just a quick overview of what makes this camera so special is that it shoots raw. Think about when you shoot raw photos, you can change all your exposure, white balance, and picture profiles after the fact in post-production. Whatever you shoot on the day actually doesn't matter, and it's not baked in like you were shooting a JPEG. That's similar to how the RED works in comparison to, say, your Sony and Canon cameras for video. When you shoot your white balance, ISO, all of that kind of thing is baked into like a .mov file. RED is a lot different in that sense, which is why most people think it's really hard to work with in post-production, which I'm here to tell you and show you that is not the case. I've actually edited 8K raw footage on my laptop, which is meant for emailing, whereas my workstation PC back at home used to struggle with Canon 4K files. So RED is absolutely really easy to edit. It's super laptop capable, and I hope this download link shows you that and lets you play with them. So in the description, there's a download link where you'll get this .r3d files zip. Once you unzip it, you'll see that there's three different folders and there's a red clip in each of them. Now it's not like a normal video file. Um, you won't actually be able to play it in like VLC or something like that. Red actually makes a new folder per clip, which is a bit weird, but when you look at it in the media browser in Premiere, it actually disregards that. So it's not an issue at all. There's also this software called Red Cine X, which I'd recommend downloading. It's just a good way to view your files without having to make a new Premiere project. You can just quickly have a look. Um, when you navigate to the files, when you go into each folder, you'll be able to see and click on it and play with the different files. And over here, you can see you can change your white balance and your ISO. And there's a lot of other settings you can play with in here and you can see all your exposure. But I'm gonna be showing you guys in Premiere how good the files are. So basically let's import them and you can see when you navigate to the files, it'll just disregard the folders, the subfolders. Let's drag them all to a new project and I'm gonna just make them all fit the 4K timeline. So we got 75 for that one because that one is 6K and this one is 8K. So I've given you three different files. These two are from the Red Epic W, one in 8K 30 frames one in 6K 75 frames, and this one is 4K 38 frames. Now you'll notice they are all converted to 24 frames in camera. So it's slow motion over crank. So when it plays back, it'll be in slow motion. And you can see here, I'm playing them all in full resolution with no issues at all. So as you can see, no issues. Same here, 4K, 8K this one, no issues. Cool. So, normally when you're ready to color grade, you would come to the Lumetri panel. If you've messed up your exposure or your white balance, you'd make your tweaks here. And I'm here to tell you that in red, we've got this little secret menu up here. See this master? You click on that, and you can change all of your settings after the fact. So, as you can see, you've got your ISO. You can play with that if you want to brighten it up. You can change your white balance. So, if, say, if I go to 8,000 white balance, it'll make it really warm. You got your tint to green and pink, um, but I'm just gonna set these back to um, before, similar. You've also got an auto balance where if you click that, you can eye drop any white in the clip. Um, and if you wanna just go back to as shot, you can just click as shot. Um, you've also got your different picture profiles. So if you pick the legacy uh, image pipeline, when you come down here, you can change your color space. If you want Rec 709, if you want dragon color, if you want to grade a log footage, you can um, go down to log. You've got all of these settings, which you can just play with. So I'll let you guys go and have a play with that. Um, and then say if it was in log, then you can come here and you can actually add like a lot over the top of that in the log and that's how you can start grading it and get some really nice images. So I'll just have a quick play with this one as well. So red actually now has IPP2, which is a bit more of a wide dynamic range. It's meant to be better in post-production. You're meant to be able to do more with it. Um, but obviously legacy has some more options if you want that. So yeah, that's basically 
uh, what this pack is. It's just for you to be able to have a play with some files. Um, yeah. So that you can add LUTs over it. You can have fun with it. And just see how easy Red is to work with in post-production is basically the idea. So head down to the description, download the pack, have some fun. Let me know how you go.